Hi, it's Jamie with It Works 3D doing a quick teardown of one of our E3D tight and narrow tool heads to show you uh, how to remove clogs, uh, replace hob bolts, idlers, and uh, filament tubes. So the nice thing about this is you don't have to tear it down entirely. Uh, the TAS tool head just has uh, two screws that hold the fan duct in place on either the Mini uh, or the TAS. The Mini has a screw over here, which we're going to remove with a two millimeter hex driver. And you'll find one kind of in the back on the Mini. Now on the Mini, this screw retains the uh, front of the fan duct. On the TAS, the fan duct is retained by this screw and this screw that hides down right in here. So we're going to remove it. You'll find that these are pretty easy to work on. The screw is an M3 and they're 10 millimeters long. And now you can just take your fan duct and just pop it down and out of the way. You have enough slack on the wires to pull it out of the way. This is a good way to get access to it for changing the nozzle as well. If you want to change a nozzle, you could pull this off, heat it up to 280C, uh, put a wrench across here, being careful not to short these wires, and loosen your nozzle, uh, replace your heat brake as well. We might show that in another video. I'm going to turn it back over to this side. You're going to take your uh, two millimeter, uh, some tool heads have 2.5 millimeter screws that hold the fan. We're going to remove each of the four screws that retain the fan. Twist, twist, twist. If you're really slick, you don't even have to remove the fan. You can actually get at the four bolts and just pull the whole half of the housing off, but uh, holding everything together to do that's kind of a trick. And then you're going to loosen these four screws here. But once you do it a couple of times, yes, you can actually leave these screws in place in the body without removing them and just separate the two halves, but I'm just going to lift out these four screws Notice that these three here are the long length. And then this one is that holds the sense lead is shorter. And make sure you don't lose the, uh, the star washer that uh, maintains contact for the sense lead there. And now you can, uh, just taking care that you have enough slack in these wires, and you should, you'll lift off the two halves of the case of the tool head. Now, if you have a filament clog, um, you may have a piece of filament, so this is the, uh, the hole where the filament goes into the heat sink and the heat break. You may have a piece of filament sticking up through this, and then sticking up through this part here, which is the, uh, the filament guide. Um, if this wears out, we have replacements for them. But you may have filament coming up through here into the filament guide and then even all the way up into the idler. So if you're trying to remove a clog, be mindful that when you lift these apart, you may be lifting this, the filament guide, and then the idler as well. If you feel resistance like that when you're trying to take it up, usually I'll kind of pull, I'll lift out the uh, idler tension spring and knob while it's in there, and then you kind of try and pull up on the idler as well, and then sometimes these will come out as a unit with these all together like this. Not a very good illustration, but you get the idea. Um, and then look for filament clogs in here if you happen to get that. If you're going to replace your hob bolt with uh, if it's worn, this one's a standard hob bolt. Uh, you can tell a standard one because it's silver. The uh, ones with the black shaft are hardened. We sell hardened uh, E3D uh, hob bolts that let you print abrasives without wearing out your hob. This just lifts out. Make sure that uh, uh, your bearings are in good shape while you're in here. There's one there. And uh, to replace this, I'll usually place it kind of at an angle into the bearing here and then sort of snap it flat against there, making sure that these surfaces are nice and flush. And just inspect your bearing 
that's in the heat sink here as well. To put this back together, just reverse this process, I'm going to take my idler and you'll notice that there is a little nub right here. That nub needs to face the spring. So the bearing side, uh, this bearing here goes against the hob and the nub faces the retaining spring. So this just drops in onto the motor shaft like that. Take your idler tension knob and spring. I usually take it in at an angle like this, place it against the nub and then tilt it down into position, give it a little twist so that this nut settles itself. The only tricky part of this on a 3 millimeter, uh, if you have a 1.75 millimeter, there's actually a PTFE tube that goes from here into the heat sink and you can take that PTFE tube and let this hold it in place by inserting it into that hole. On a 3 millimeter, you don't have that, so what you got to do is take this and make sure uh, the flat side is going to be forward here and we do sell these filament guides if your, yours wears out just make note of whether it says 2.85 R, 2.85 L, 1.75 R, 1.75 L because there's four different models whether it's mirror or non. And the only trick to this I'd suggest is you kind of make sure your wires are clear, tilt the tool head back so that gravity and friction is holding the uh, filament guide in place and then with this at a tilt back like this, use this top here, right there, and push it against your filament guide like that to hold it in place. See how it's holding it in place? And then tilt this down until it lines up, and then push it to snap it in place. Usually it'll snap nice and straight like this. If it's not closing completely, usually means a hub bolt is not sitting in, uh, its shaft isn't sitting in its bearing here, and usually giving the hub bolt a little wiggle back and forth here will let the shaft seat into its bearing in this position. And then you just reverse that process uh, to install everything back in there. Uh, I usually start by putting the screw through the eyelet here, putting the star washer on, and now remember that this screw right here, uh, the short one, uh, is what you're using here. It threads into an insert in the plastic, so it just needs to be snug. You don't want to tighten it up too much or it'll crack that insert. These other three, these are your three long screws that are all the same length. Uh, those thread all the way through into the stepper and can use a little more force to tighten them up. One, two, and... You don't need Hulk hands, just, uh, you know, enough to snug it up, hold it in place. And three, I'm going to put my silicone sock back on before I forget. That wasn't necessary to take it off for this disassembly, just wanted to show you that for the idler. I usually use the wrench to kind of poke it back down behind the thermistor wires here too. And then your four screws that retain your fan. We had an older design for this tool head that had braces on this side. It made it a lot more difficult to work on. Uh, this new design with the improved filament cooling duct uh, really is much easier to work on as well. If you need to replace things like the fan or the uh, thermistor or resistor, we have another video that's only a couple of minutes long that shows you how to remove the pins from the connector and reinstall them without breaking them and, uh, and bending them so that they'll retain properly. Um, and then to put the, uh, the filament cooling duct back on, I'll kind of get lined up here, make sure these wires are, are clear of the body kind of line it up this way and then just sort of tilt it into place making sure I'm not pinching any of the thermistor or resistor wires down in here and tilt it up into place. I'll tackle the more difficult of the two screws first which is only more difficult because there's some wires in place. Uh, the screws going into that hole right there and just tighten it up 
until it's snug. Like so. And then the other matching button head 3 by 10 millimeter screw tightens up like so. So you can see these E3D Titan Arrow tool heads are nice and easy to disassemble, nice and easy to clear clogs and replace parts on. If you'd like more information on these E3D Titan Arrow tool heads for Lulzbot, Taz, and Mini, visit itworks3d.com. Thanks, and thanks for watching.